Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This video is gonna be, you'll probably know by the title already, but basically, Michael, Mike, the question I have is, I'm gonna film this slow motion right here. I got my 240 frames a second going. Right. Okay, so that's my swing. Actually, not even just a practice swing, but hitting something. Right. And let's take this over here, Mike, to our main camera. Okay, Mike, I've been trying to get, you know, uh, like we were talking in some of the other videos, all these different positions and stuff. Right. And I noticed just because I had the slow motion camera that in my practice swing, and even if I hit something, even if I hit like a, a wiffle ball, Yep. I've been trying to get this position right there. That's it. I mean, that is, for me, like, that looks like tour. I got my hands yeah. up at the front leg. The sh the, there's there's not really shuffling. It's really just basically up and down. Right. But it's it's caught well in front of me. Now, if now we're going to do... So, you guys saw that. Now, I'm going to hit a ball, and we're going to see... Hopefully, this is a, a two-minute long video, and hopefully, I've I've... I'm able to do exactly what I do in my practice swing with the ball. You won't. Uh, T, please. You won't because I'm going to tell you something from just watching that video. I mean, you can go ahead and do it. Yeah. If you duplicate exactly, and I'm going to tell everybody in a minute here why their practice swing is very misleading. Okay. So let's check this out. So now I'm going to try to hit the ball, and I'm really going to try just to imagine that that styrofoam cup is there. Okay. Okay. Because this is something that I've heard a lot of people say once I started talking about it, that they all think their practice swings have positions on them that they've been trying to get for years and haven't been able to. So we go to my regular swing. Oh, damn. It's closer. Uh, okay. But you, you hit it thin. Uh, it was thin, but I'm, was... I'm happy with the position. I haven't been able to get that at all. So Mike... What is the difference between a practice swing and a regular swing, and what can we learn about those two things? Okay, practice swings. I've had so many people come and say, you know, I just wish I could make my practice swing when I hit the ball, because my practice swing is significantly better. And I go, yeah. really? And the looks, yeah. And it looks better, it feels better. I says, okay, well, let's see. So they put their practice swing, and they make their practice swing, and I put it on the video. And, and no question, the tension's less, the swing's better, except one very important thing, mm -hmm. the face through impact. Okay. So when you just hit that styrofoam cup, yeah. your face was so far open when you ran it into the ball that if okay. you would have actually duplicated what you just did there, uh -huh. the ball would have gone way over here. So we'll cut so, that so, in right now, so we'll see it. Okay. So, so here's what happens. If you watch tour players, every time they move the club, if you slow it down, Mm -hmm. Right through impact where the ball would be, the face is perfect. Every time they move it, rather... I don't, I don't care if they're, if they're standing the here just doing this. Yeah. Whatever they're doing, when they come right through this area where the ball would be, their club face is perfect where yeah. it would be to hit it straight. Now, yeah. I watch people make practice swings. Now, I'm going to make this practice swing, and if you watch it, you go, yeah. that was a good swing. Yeah. All right, now this time well, I'm going to yeah. slow it down. Okay. So I make that same practice swing in slow motion through here. That ball would have gone way over there. Yeah. Or they make a practice swing that looks like this, and they go, God, that felt good. Now if I slow that one down, the face was like that through impact. Yeah. So what happens is your practice swing from a motion perspective and a path perspective is great. However, your face angle, if you get up and do, try to duplicate that, the ball is going to go sideways because the face has no relevance to the target. Okay. Okay, so if you're going to make practice swings, you have to be sensing the face through the ball. So if you want positions, the positions have to also re re relate to where the face is through the ball. Mm -hmm. If you're giving me a practice swing that looks good and feels good and it's on, but the face is off, it's not going to work because it's the face that hits the ball. Well, when we hit balls, I mean, if, if you know anything about the ball flight laws or really just anything about, you know, contacts, right. you know where the face was in impact. The, the ball tells you, obviously. Right. When you make a, so how can we have practice swings that also have face control? In well, first of all, you've got to slow it down okay. to where you can kind of sense where your hands are and where the face is through the ball. 
Because if you're practicing and you're coming through the ball and you're trying to lean the shaft forward and you've got the face like that, mm -hmm. let's think about this for a minute. Track man will tell us. Right. You make a swing and hit a ball perfect, and it goes exactly where you want it to go. You make the next swing, everything's the same, but the face is three degrees more open or closed. Yeah. At 200 yards, the ball curves 30 or 40 yards offline. Three degrees. Now, three degrees, it sounds like a lot, but if I show you three degrees, if I open this face yeah. three degrees, you can't even see it. Yeah, three degrees is like the difference between 12 noon and like 12.01. Or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. That sounds like a little bit. Yeah. But the reality of what impact that has on where the ball ends up going is dramatic. So you're making practice swings, and if your face is six, eight, ten degrees off, and you duplicate that when one or two degrees hits it sideways, and now you're six or eight degrees off, mm -hmm. where's that one going? Okay. Okay, so you've got to be tied into what the face is doing through impact. So every time I swing a club, I'm very aware of, of where the face is going to be right here. So when I'm making practice swings, and now the tour players have gotten to the point, and believe me, folks, I've filmed them. Yeah. I'd, I've never seen them. I, they never make a swing where you slow it down and they're like this through impact or they're like that through impact. They may be doing all kinds of crazy things back in here, but when they go right through there, it's, it's the face is pretty close to square to their path or a few degrees off. I watch amateurs make practice swings and I slow it down. Their face is sometimes 20 and 30 degrees offline. So the practice swing could be killing your regular swing because it's disconnecting you from what the face is doing. Because you're not connecting you don't, you both don't care of them about, together. You're just doing body motions. Right, yeah. so your body motions are better, yeah. but your face control's terrible. All right, so I'm gonna try to hit this ball, but before I hit this ball, Mike, okay. I'm gonna make some more proper practice swings, okay? okay. And even into this, the remnants of our styrofoam cup here. So the other thing with that cup, yeah, you, you really can't tell. No, you can't tell where the if face the face is, is two yeah. or three degrees off. You hit the cup and you go that fell. Explodes. It's like yeah. it's like hitting an impact bag. Mm -hmm. I mean, you hit the impact bag, you hit it with the heel of the face could be twenty degrees off, and you go, oh, that feels great. Right. Well, but the face right. has no relevance. Yeah. Okay. So how would you like to see me make some practice swings, Mike? Well, just make the same thing, but be very conscious of how the face is working right through there. So you've got to square the club face on the ball. Okay? You've got to feel how the face is working. It's got to relate to the face. And then if you keep building the speed up, but you keep feeling the face, then all of a sudden you've got something. So now you've got a motion that has a nice motion with a good arc, but you also are relating it to face control. You have to control the face. The game is control the face. If you don't control the face, now you, now you put that on the ball, and preferably it's it, it initially at that speed so you can feel what you're trying to feel plus feel the face. And okay, now that one's significantly better. And that was pretty, that, that you jumped that up to pretty, a lot faster than your practice. Yeah, I have bad discipline when it comes to well, throttling it back. That's okay. Yeah. But see, face control, in my opinion, is the game. Yeah. You just heard Tiger talk about on, a, in a, on an interview, what's, what do you focus on? What did he say? My hands. He says, I've always trusted my hands. My hands are my whole game. And they ask him, well, well, what about your swing? He goes, well, I've worked on positions and I've tried this and I've body this and body that. But he says, bottom line, my hands control the face. I play golf with my hands. He says, now maybe I learned that from playing baseball. And he says, bottom line, at the end of the day, my hands control the face and my arms control my body. This is Tiger. Yeah. Now I asked Jack, mm -hmm. Jack, how important are your hands in the golf swing? He goes, I understand your question. Okay. I go, no, seriously. How important are your hands in the golf swing? He goes, Mike, I don't understand your question. I said, well, what don't you understand about my question? He goes, well, your hands are your golf swing. So your hands are the only thing you touch the club with. They have to learn to control the club. Now, the better your hands are at controlling the club, you get to a point where you don't have to think about them as much. Right. Okay, most people never get to that point. They start right with, I have control with my hands. I'm just going to put them on the club and make a motion with my body, and the face is going to show up. It doesn't. Well, we have more passion than daylight, so we're going <laughs> to we're gonna wrap it up now, but we, we have a lot more videos coming. If you guys have any questions you'd like to see answered or anything like that, put them in the comments below. Glad to, uh, 
to take care of those. Mike, tell us a little bit about MalaskaGolf.com. Well, we, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and I've spent a lot of time developing a site that's a learning site. So I'm seeing more and more of these guys jump on or whatever, which is, it's a skill development game. Mm -hmm. So the M system is, okay, what's skill one? What do you need to know? Can you do this? Are you aware of this? Yes, okay. What's skill two? It's like learning to play the guitar or learning to do anything. It's a skill development. You have to have skill before you have a game. So over my years of understanding the body, how it works, how you learn other sports, how you move, how your brain learns things, there's a skill development pathway, which is called the M system. So people are coming to it and, and I'm making them aware of, okay, you tried to do this. I tried to do it too. Where was the roadblock there? What was maybe the misconception or what, how did I get confused? Can you do this? Yes, I can. No, I can't. Well, you better learn to do this because if you can't do this, you can't go on. And if you don't learn this, you're going to get to a point where you plateau and no matter how much you practice, you stay the same, right. which is exactly with guitar and everything else. I'm at a point with my guitar playing that I need to learn a couple of things to get better. And, it, and I can't, more speed or a harder song isn't going to make me better. So yeah. there's a skills that I still, that I don't have, that I have to learn to be able to go to the next level. No matter how much I want to play those things, I can't play them because yeah. I don't have the skill. That's where people are in golf. So what is the development process? What are the skills? How do they build on each other? Mm -hmm. And as you build those skills, if you get off, how do you reinforce yourself on a daily basis so you don't lose them? You know, really, in my opinion, swinging a golf club and hitting a ball should be very similar to riding a bike. Once you get it, you should never be really bad at it. If, if I brought a bike out here right now and you hadn't ridden for, th and I haven't ridden for a long time, I wouldn't have to go back to training wheels. No, no. Within 100 yards, I'm riding the bike again. Yeah. Well, all that is is learning how to balance and offset forces. And once you learn what those are and what that feels like, mm -hmm. you don't forget it. Yeah, now, the from game. Just purely athletic standpoint, riding a bike in a lot of ways should be harder. It is. <laughs> you know, and there's well, a lot going on. There's a lot going yeah. on, and hitting a moving ball is much more difficult than hitting a stationary ball. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Now, the, the sports side, well, the ball's still, so you can think about this and that. Well, you're thinking about the wrong thing. Well, and, like, if you do it one in three times, you're in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, right. And then they say, well, in, in golf, golf, you have you to golf but they <laughs> say in golf, you play your foul balls, too. So that's whatever. Yeah, I mean, everybody true. keeps coming up with what they want to defend their position. Right. But my point is, if you can hit a moving ball, hitting a stationary ball, at least hitting it in front of you shouldn't be harder. Sure. So why has it become harder for a lot of people? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, it's because the tasks and the skills, are, they have the wrong ones. And your brain's a taskmaster. You give it a, a wrong skill or a skill that assumes other competency that you don't have, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. So what are the skills? And if you retrace the skill pathway for golf, good athletes, good hand-eye, they can hit it. I see it every single day. These guys show up, I can't play, I'm going to quit. I go, okay, can you do this? No, okay, do this. And all of a sudden they're hitting it better. And they go, well, then they, here's what I call the what about lesson. So now they're hitting it better and they're controlling the ball. And they go, well, what about my head? I go, what? Yeah, right. What about your head? Yeah. What about it? I didn't yeah. say anything about your head. They'll see something on video. They don't uh, like. What like about my left? Up what about my up. left arm? Yeah. I go, what? Yeah. I don't understand your question. You're you're hitting it better than you've ever hit it, and you want to know about your left arm? I, I'm not. I don't quite. Now I get it, but I'm trying to get him to go. Listen, that's why you're no good. Is because you're focused on things that aren't that important. That's true. And you're yeah. not getting really good at the things that are really important. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click the subscribe button. See you later. Bye. Is that going to show up on your video? Well, we'll hear it crystal clear, and we weren't swinging too much, so no, that, that'll be fine. Okay. It'll that be, was it'll awesome. It'll be better. Yeah, it was fun.